And action. Today's view is a bit different than my typical tech office setup where back in Toronto, I am looking at snow. Right now though, I'm actually looking at the beach, but instead I'm choosing to hang out with you and talk all about the top 10 skills to future-proof your career. Well, okay. Nothing is future proof, but we are going to go through some of the skills that data and reports are putting out that will remain in demand as long as the foreseeable future can predict anyways. I'm really excited to go through this with you because you know on this channel we really love diving into future tech, future skills, but this one's gonna be a bit different. So you know what, rather than me explaining, let's just go through it. These skills are for multiple roles. That's how it's really different. It's not going to be, if you wanna stay in demand, you need to become a data scientist or you need to become a software engineer because at the end of the day, we don't know exactly what roles per se will look like in the future, but skills, Skills, that's another thing. That is something that we can predict pretty accurately as to what will be in demand in the future. All right, let's get into it. Before we even start though, I found this stat really interesting. So this is from the World Economic Forum and they go on to state that 50% of all employees will need reskilling by 2025. I mean, 2025 is less than a year away. I'm not trying to fast forward time, but when you really let that sink in, how quickly tech is changing. I mean, think about the past year and a half, year and a half with ChatGPT, with AI, things are moving pretty quick. So rather than saying that you need to learn this technology or this, uh, you know, get land this role in order to stay in demand, it's not realistic because just now this stat, 50% of all employees need reskilling by 2025, goes to show you that there's something there. There's something there that when you are talking to other uh, peers at work or friends and they're kind of staying ahead of the game or they see like you're like if you got laid off tomorrow I know you'd find a job right away what exactly is it they what did the young kids say spilling the tea spilling the coffee. That's what we're gonna do, but we're not gonna spill any coffee. All right, let's start with one that might be a bit controversial given where AI is at today, which is one of the biggest skills that will be in demand from now to the foreseeable future is actually coding. Now hear me out. This doesn't mean software engineering. Coding doesn't have to equate to that necessarily. What it means is coding is going to come into so many different roles in various ways. And the best part is this is happening because of, well, AI. And now with AI, tools such as ChatGPT, or other uh, AI tools like Copilot, more than ever, people can have access to start coding and they can do so within their role. So let's go through an example. Let's say you are a designer and you are someone who is designing a lot of home pages or blog posts or different things like that. Now, with the help of AI tooling, you are able to take basic coding and apply it to these pages. You don't need to make a ticket for this. I remember back when I worked at IBM and this is before AI really blew up, there were things that designed designers would ask us developers to do that were so simple. And in turn, what would happen is it would take you as a developer out of your deep thought, your deep coding process, working on a big feature. And a designer would come in and say, hey, I need this text updated, I need this color updated, and I need it done yesterday, basically. And in turn, it would take you out of your flow that you're working on a big feature for. So basic coding will really start spreading across to many different roles. And having that skill set of basic coding is going to really set you apart. Okay, the next one is digital literacy. And this isn't necessarily a specific skill like coding per se, but what it does do is a lot of companies now really value people who are able to stay up to date with tech who know what's going on in tech. I mean, even where I work currently, a lot of our conversations are around, hey, did you see what OpenAI is doing right now? Or did you see what you know NVIDIA is working on right now? And what that really does is when you are able to be part of that conversation, contribute to it, that you understand what is going on with that technology will really set you apart. And this doesn't mean you have to necessarily go and get a certification in every tech that comes out, because right now it feels like there's a new technology coming out every day. But being A, aware of what is going on in the industry and then B if there is something of interest to you really diving into that even if it doesn't pertain to your specific role at the time I really believe we are gone gone are the days where you have this specific niche in your career for your entire career path living in this really cool time where for a few years you might be a software engineer and then maybe thanks to online learning and online certifications you move into more so of a I don't know, a architect role or a something completely different. That's the beauty of technology and where we are at today, especially with online learning. So staying digital literate, no, literal, digit, what is it, Paul? 
staying literate. Staying literate. Stay literate. Staying digitally literate. Thank you, Paul. Is going to really set you apart. Now, I've done a ton of videos on how to do this, which I'll link down below, but really the key thing is keeping up to date with tech. And yes, it is possible. All right, coming in at number three, this one is a little interesting here, is public speaking. Now, public speaking don't necessarily have, I think when we think of public speaking, our mind goes to an image like this, where it's millions, it feels like, of people staring back at you, you're on the screen or on the stage and just talking. That doesn't always have to be the case with public speaking. Public speaking can be as simple as you are speaking to your team members, even virtually presenting something that you studied or that you learned, but getting comfortable with communicating communicating what you are learning, uh, your ideas, different things like that is all going to be under public speaking in this video anyways. And why is this important or becoming even more important than ever? Well, technology, we all, we talk about this in every point, it's moving quickly. And being able to articulate your thoughts or your ideas will really help set you apart, especially when you are interviewing for new roles. I mean, now it, currently there are so many individuals who are so talented, so brilliant with technical skills that have been laid off just due to well, companies sucking right now. No, I'm just kidding. But just due to the current uh, environment that they are interviewing and you are interviewing against them and having good communication skills and a way to almost, I know this sounds kind of, we don't like to use this word, but you know, selling yourself, it will help sell yourself. Not saying, you know, when you think sell yourself, don't think things that you're putting on a front or you're not, you know, I don't know why I don't like that term selling yourself, but I guess what I'm getting at is it will really help you stand out by sharing what you are capable of. I like that better. All right, next on the list, coming in at number four is problem solving. Problem solving, and let's also add in there logical thinking or critical thinking, I should say. Gone are the days, as I mentioned, even in the last point where you know we are given one task and that is our job for the rest of our lives or as long as we work at a company. I'm finding nowadays companies have these expectations of us when we come in that we have multiple skill sets. As I mentioned earlier, coding, problem solving, public speaking. Gone are the days where we can just have one specific skill set. That is what we do for eight hours a day as long as we work at this company. Now they really expect, especially if you want to stand out anyways, that you are versatile, that you can be flexible. And with that comes critical thinking. And why I say that is because if you are someone who is able to really find your own solutions to problems when they occur versus always having to reach out to another team member or always having to make a ticket for a developer, you will stand out. And I guarantee you'll get promoted quicker. You will get more referrals. It will just be a better scenario. Now I'm not saying try and silo yourself and solve all problems by yourself, but being able to really put on your critical thinking hat and be comfortable with finding solutions to problems without always having to go to your manager is a huge skill that will stand out, that will help you stand out. All right, coming in at number five is data analysis and statistics. No, even if you're scared of math, don't run away before I finish this point. Having these skills though, especially around data analysis is going to really help you. I mean, for me even, I'm not a data scientist, but having the skills or the ability to analyze data not only helps me with my day job, but it helps me with creating content for you, knowing what you wanna see and so much further. So, tip. If I'm not a data scientist, how am I going to have the skills of a data analyst or data scientist even? Well, let me explain. First of all, I know they are two separate roles, but in this case, we are talking more so about how to access data and analyze it. So what I like to do is honestly, drum roll please, it goes back to ChatGPT. What I will do is if I am analyzing a large set of data, I will input it into ChatGPT and then ask it questions about what I'm looking for specifically. I made a whole video on this, which I'll link down below, but that kind of summarizes it, is utilizing tools at hand to analyze data to make better and more informed decisions. Now this can play into so many roles. Think about it from the perspective of if you are a business analyst, okay? And you are talking to customers a lot, they want to have uh, insights as to what is working, what isn't working, rather than always having to go to your developer. To get these pieces of data, you can now do so, as long as they give you certain permissions, of course. But for most companies I've worked for, they will, or they even almost expect data or business analysts to be able to query to different databases or things like that, depending on how big the company is. But having that ability to work with data will really set you apart. Data isn't going anywhere and it's becoming more and more valuable, which I know it sounds impossible. It's already so valuable, but having these skills will help set you apart. All right, I'm having my coffee, my morning coffee. 
And I was thinking, the next question you're probably gonna follow up with is, well, great Tiff, it's great to have all these skills, but how do I get them? Here's the beautiful thing about this. It's not necessarily though you have to take a course and check it off. I mean, there are courses for everything that we just listed, but the best part is you can start doing small steps today to implement them into your day job, your school, wherever your situation is. And the second best part to this is you can actually put them on your resume, meaning you can put that you are a critical thinker. You can put that you have data analysis skills just because you don't aren't don't have a specific title for skills that are typically used within that role doesn't mean you can't put it on your resume. You know, especially when you are applying for jobs and the first step of the job application is going through run by an AI tool for the company you're applying to, they're looking for these keywords. And if you aren't really leaning on, hey, I have these skill sets, it's just going to nix your resume to begin with. And you're never going to have an opportunity to even share with the company what you are all about. All right, the sun is finally coming out. I think my skill set for the day is to relax. I do have my, my machine learning course though this evening. So speaking of upskilling and continuing to learn, on beautiful vacation, but still upskilling. All right, thank you all for watching this video. I hope you found it valuable as some of the top skills that will remain in demand in the future. Leave in the comments other skills that you would add to this list. Maybe you disagree with some. Let's have a great conversation there. And also leave other video topics you want me to cover. All right, oh, and subscribe. You know what to do. See you all soon, bye everyone.